All Progressives Congress seems to be steadily progressing into an uncertain future. And it carries along a heavy baggage of unresolved internal crises arising from its ward and state congresses. The date of the National Congress also remains unknown, and party leaders are uncomfortably silent, but hoping that President Muhammad Buhari will speak up for once and point the governing party to the direction of internal democracy and inclusion. Already there are contenders for the office of National Chairman of the APC. Almost all of them believe they know what is wrong with the party and how to regain the goodwill the All Progressives Congress has nearly frittered away after its popular election victory in 2015. I will sit down with Senator Mohamed Saini Musa, representing Ninja East in the National Assembly. He's also an aspirant for the office of the National Chairman of the APC. <music> What does it take to be the national chairman of the APC, a governing party? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you just asked the question of what does it take to be a national chairman. Mm. I believe it's just not about APC, it's about leadership. Mm. What does it take to be a leader? There are qualities that you require in every organization. Even in your own household, you need certain qualities to be able to lead very well. And I believe that every political party, not only the APC, needs qualitative leaders who will come with ideals that will prosper the nation, not just about who is the chairman, but about what delivery, what can be delivered from that uh, entity. Now, you know, when you look at um, politics and political parties, it takes... Uh, extra uh, special skills to run and um, lead a political party? I believe uh, leadership is, is all about the qualities of integrity, the qualities of delivery, the qualities of, uh, uh, of uh, doing, I mean, putting your, your words to action. Uh, in a political setup, most times people think when you are a politician, what you say doesn't matter. No, it matters a lot. And to be a leader, you have to possess those qualities that will make uh, whoever that is following you as a member of that political organization to believe that uh, there is somebody that is representing them very well. Mm -hmm. And I believe I, I, I have the pedigree to, to do that. Uh, you see, it's not all about being a politician. This country deserves the best. And I believe I have something that I can offer in terms of leadership to the APC, to reposition the party, to reorganize the party, to give it a structure that every Nigerian will believe that this is the best platform that will deliver on those expectations that Nigerians have. Mm -hmm. Just as we are doing today, you can see what the president is doing. If going by his ideals, if he's going by his ideologies, you will see that it's someone that have the interest of this country at heart. Mm -hmm. And what he wants is how he can deliver to the common man on the street to believe that he is in a country where everything is there. We, we, we know that we face challenges, leaders face challenges, but also leaders will, must come with clean hands to be able to deliver those and, and, and face those challenges head on. Senator, talking about expectations, uh, these expectations were very high in 2015 when uh, the APC came on board as the most popular party. But down the road, a lot of people would say that the APC uh, is uh, becoming unpopular. A lot of the goodwill the party enjoyed at that time has been frittered away. Uh, yes, I will maybe likely agree with some of your points that uh, uh, the expectations, every human being has uh, quite a lot of expectations. And you, you will know that uh, uh, governance is a continuum. And uh, there are quite a lot of things that you might not see while you are outside the government, but when you come into the government, you will see it. And I can tell you that uh, from all expectations, what we are thinking this government will do, are doing it, but maybe you will say they are not meeting up as expected, the people. But you look at the resources. Also, Nigerians are very quick to forget that uh, the COVID-19 held us back. And uh, it is uh, part of the, 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 the term that this administration has. So when people are talking about not uh, delivering, we have delivered. You can see the roads 
uh, the construction of road. It has never happened like the way the APC administration is doing it today. You can see the rehabilitation and the re 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 resuscitation of uh, the railway lines we're doing from uh, Lagos to Kano. Uh, it's something that we should also appreciate. We can see how we, we completed the Kaduna Abuja uh, railway system. You can see how uh, what has been on the drawing board for a very long time, that is the Niger Bridge. You can see today Niger Bridge is almost about 60% completion, and we believe that before the end of this administration, we should be able to commission the Niger Bridge. You will see the railway, I mean, uh, the, the power sector. Today, a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, power generating plants have been constructed by this administration. The Zungeru power plant will soon be commissioned. Uh, we have the Kashembela power plant, which already has been completed, will also be commissioned. And there are so many others in the pipeline. Yeah. So uh, when, when we are talking about the indices uh, of uh, the progression in terms of infrastructure in this country, APC can well be said to have done very well. If you look at the social services as well, it has never happened in this country where the ordinary market woman will be getting some stiffing as contribution from government to support her little business that she's doing. Yeah. And we've done it. President Muhammad Bahari came in and said there will not be rise in potential in this country. Today, most of the rise, I can tell you without any fear of contradiction that 80% or 90% of the rise we consume in this country is produced locally. Yeah. Was it done before? So if you look at it, you will see that, yes, in some areas, yeah, we have challenges, like the security challenges, which we inherited, and we're doing the best. But Initially, but you cannot go to Banex Plaza, you cannot go to anywhere, motor parks here, you cannot go because you are scared of the bomb not going up. But today, it's, it's not the case. Yeah, you will talk about uh, Kaduna, Kano, uh, Kaduna Expressway, you will talk about the banditry. Banditry, yes, we inherited uh, Boko Haram, and when the banditry came, you can see the government have taken action. Government have decided to now declare them as terrorists. Yeah. But Senator, a lot of people say again that, you know, when we talk about um, governance, a lot of people point fingers at the federal government. Even most of these achievements you have highlighted, uh, what the federal government has done. You aspire to be the national chairman of the APC. A lot of um, these um, issues are in the states. The states, some people will say, have state governments, especially those states where um, you have the APC as the governing party, a lot of them have contributed in demarketing the APC and making it less popular. You go to some of these states, uh, projects are not even being done, some of them salaries are not being paid, infrastructure is not in place, and these are APC states, so it's like, uh, you're preaching development at the federal level, but going to the state level, uh, some people say nothing is going on, and it has even become a subject of ridicule, especially from opposition parties. I, I don't want to believe you. I don't want to accept that, because I know that our governors are doing very well. If you go to Lagos State, I can tell you. you uh, just, see, just a few of them. No, no, not just a few of them. Just as you're talking about our governors, we have governors in other parties. What have they done? But, but, but you ours have, are you doing. Have, you have our, our, most of our the governors, governors are doing very well. Go to Kaduna and see the transformation happening in Kaduna. Go to Katsina and see what Katsina governor has done. You, you, don't, you don't just sit down in the state capital and believe that everything is okay once the state capital has been, been developed. Go and see how they have developed the urban areas. Niger State Governor is doing very well. When you talk about feeder roads today, I don't think there is any governor that came to Niger State that have constructed feeder roads the way, the way my governor has constructed feeder roads. And th this is the most important part of uh, aspect of development because the farmers will be able to move with the agricultural products they produce down to the market. So when you go to other states like, uh, like Kano State, you cannot tell me that there is no development in Kano with what Ganduja is doing. So the same thing with Gombe, you can't tell me you're not seeing any development, or are you telling me that uh, Borno State is not doing well? Can you compare what is happening in Borno and, uh, and, uh, and what is happening in Taraba State or what is happening in, in, in Benue States? Can you compare the two? Can you compare what is happening in Kaduna with what is happening in Benue? You can't compare that. I mean, ours don't make too much noise about this thing. It's not about commissioning one kilometer road and you call a governor to come and commission it and you think that is development. Let's be honest. What are the resources coming into the state corpus? Are they the same? Let's be honest. That is why I said what we need 
is the kind of leadership in this country that will be able to say the truth. Say it. Yeah, if there are weaknesses with our governors, I can say it. And what is the problem? Falsity of, uh, of funds. The, again, your party, the All Progressives Congress, is a troubled wall. Some people have even described it as a house divided against itself. We have seen um, the Congress is at the local government level, the state level. Some states are even yet to even uh, conclude uh, or have, uh, come to a conclusion uh, uh, on the conduct of um, their Congresses. The issues are still there, and you're aspiring to lead a divided house. What is your strategy? You, you, you can't run away from controversies in any political setup. And that is the beauty of democracy. You bring your own issues, I bring my own issues, we put them on the table, and we find the lasting solutions, and we are going to do that. So what is your all strategy? Ab all, all about, I, I, will, I will not want to disclose all my strategies here, but I will tell you that it's a family problem, and we are going to sit down on the table, and we are going to settle all of this. If you remember, towards the end of the PDP administration in 2015, you can see how many governors left the PDP. But today, how many governors are coming into APC from the PDP? And still more are coming. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you cannot, even in your own household, you have problems of different ideals. I have my own ideas, you have your own ideas. And we might not be on the same, the same track, but when it comes to reality, I'll put my own on the table, you put yours on the table, and this period argument will take a course and will make people that will make that peace to believe that this is the right way to go, and the other, uh, the other party will also believe. You're talking about the uh, issue of world congresses. Are you telling me it's only in the APC that we have issues with world congresses? But the APC I, is I your can party tell you in my own state, in my it. own state there are issues with uh, PDP had issues. They've gone to court. Have you heard in my state anybody has gone to court? So when you're talking about these issues, I mean, generally, the political parties in Nigeria have problems, and these problems has to do with the quality of the leadership of those political parties. When you make a political party an institution where the books, all the rules, all the ethics of that uh, party is being, being, being adhered to, you will see changes. And this is what we are going to bring to APC. And that is why Mr. President, when he was talking, he said he wants to set up this uh, 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 what convention, uh, extraordinary uh, caretaker committee to mm -hmm. come and do what? Uh, the caretaker extraordinary convention planning committee to come to do what? They came in order to set a standard for this party. What have they done so far? They've tried to do reg new registration for all members of this party. We have, we have a register already, but we just went back to make sure that our registers are good. And they've done it very well. And after that, the Congresses came. Yes, there are, there, are, there are divisions in the Congresses. But the President has said it. I want the party to go button up. And this is the kind of ideal leadership I have. And this is what will inspire Nigerians to believe that, look, there's still hope and we're going to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Would you support the emergence of a consensus candidate if the party decides to throw that light? I have no problem about the consensus candidates if that is what the party will want to be, it will want to have. Why did I say that? Is because, look, in every set of you have rules, you have ethics, you have guidelines in the box. And if consensus is part of our guidelines, why not? Be it. Okay, certain interests um, inside your party, the All Progressives Congress, are jittery over the passage of the uh, Electoral Act Amendment Bill. The president is yet to sign it, but you know there have been so much um, contention about the direct primary and indirect primary issue. Would I, uh, I would like to ask, where do you stand on this? What matter? is the beauty of democracy? The beauty of democracy is for the majority to carry the, their, their way, and the minority will have their say. So in every democratic setup, not only in Nigeria, everywhere, where the majority have their way, the minority will be hard. But they say the, so, the, so the lawmakers the, want direct primaries and governors want indirect primaries. I don't, I don't think, you see, it is, it, is, it is the fiction of some people making it look as if there's a division between the governors 
and the and the and the and the and the and the Lump, members Lump of the parliament, the national assembly members. So tell us there's what, no, what no, is no, it? No, 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 there is no rancor about it. We all belong to the political party. We are all elected, just as the governors are elected. We are also elected. And we, if, if I intend to go and contest for governorship, I have to throw myself to the ring and uh, campaign. If I want to be a member of the National Assembly, I have to go and campaign. So what's the difference about that? But you know, people say the bottom-up approach that President Muhammad Buhari is preaching yeah. would only be... Uh, what, what, what is his definition of direct and indirect? No, Tell me. The, the direct primaries will, uh, direct will primaries enhance inclusion. Inclusion. Of inclusion of and that is the bottom-up approach President and, Muhammad and, Buhari and is talking about. And that is the point I'm making to you that if we go by the books, if we go by the guidelines, if we go by the laws, the constitution of the party, we will get it right. That means you support direct primaries. Not that I support direct primaries. I can support any of the two. Any one that the legislation gives to work with, I, as uh, if I'm aspiring to be a national chairman of the party, why do you think I should be one that will want to impose certain things on anyone? But I told you, I will go with the majority and the minority will carry I will hear what they said. I will give them the, the, the listening ears. But what will dictate my tune is the majority. So if it is indirect, be it. If it is direct, be it. What I believe is that whatever the legislation comes with is what we will work with as a party. Okay, then. The People's Democratic Party, the opposition party, uh, they also just elected the national chairman and... Uh, even the National Working Committee is all already in place. And people are saying that the opposition is beginning to get its acts together. They've been out of power for a while now, since 2015, when the APC came on board. And we're hearing strong words from them. Come 2023, APC will be sent packing. Are you ready to pack as Now, if you are saying what you heard is APC will be sent packing, the mantra that I have heard from them is what? Uh, maybe you can remind me what they call that mantra. And uh, I don't want to say because, like, uh, the <laughs> public are here listening to me. Uh, the viewers are listening to me. I will have said it's very scandalous for a political party like the PDP to start making that noise. Let them get their act right. Why, is it, why do you think it's scandalous? Uh, let them get their act right. We have seen what happened in the last 16 years in this country, and we don't want to go back to that. The trajectory must change. The youth in this country must have their way. And this is what my mission is going to be. But you know, um, we've had that um, over and over again, that the PDP, we have seen how they um, manage the economy and all of that. And some people are also saying that the APC is also badly managing the economy. You can, so you what, know, is you, you, what is you, the difference? You cannot compare an administration that has spent 16 years with a, a, a barrel uh, a, of oil going for over a hundred dollars and then compare with someone that came in at a time the barrel of oil is going as down down less than thirty thirty dollars and then you you think the comparison can be the same over so much years it's not it cannot be the same you have to see with the little that apc government has been able to get what have they done what have they done Go and see it in terms of infrastructures. If these infrastructures have been put on ground, this administration will have now been able to move forward to doing other things with the funds that we are putting in, in, in doing uh, infrastructure at this moment. Are you telling me that today you fly an aircraft in this country having some kind of fear in you like the way you fly? In fact, I can tell you that a lot of people stop flying airlines during the AP PDP administration. Mm. What, what brought about that? We have international standards in everything. And if we said we are going to go with the international best practices, I can tell you that APC is doing that. Mm. We're doing that. So uh, your, 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 your narrative is the fact that a, a PDP have done a Congress. How did they arrive at the Congress? How did they arrive at the Congress? An and those are the kind of and those are the kind of narratives we are saying we should change. I mean, we shouldn't be recycling people. We shouldn't. These are the same people that are putting us in the same situation we are today. We must move. And from the antecedents of one, you should know who that person is. 
Okay, for you to say you want to throw your hat in the ring and contest for the office of the national chairman of the APC, that means you understand the party well, you understand what it is to uh, oil the wheel of um, progress within a political party as big as uh, the All Progressives uh, Congress. What is wrong with the party that you would fix? What I believed in, political development is as good as education and development. Politics is about learning every day. And uh, you learn from the mistakes of the past in order to put them right. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that when someone has really messed up last time and you believe that he can come in now and do the best. No, come on. This country has to move. And what I think I will prefer for this party is that I'm coming to restructure, to reorganize, and reshape the doings of this party. The internal structure of this party needs to be reshaped and restructured very well to make it work with the 21st century, you know. When you look at uh, advanced democracies, when I said I'm a Democrat, or when you say you're a Republican, without you saying it, your actions, your deeds will be able to show them. We don't have any ideology in terms of party. Uh, well, the only party I can tell you after the first and second republic that have a little bit of an ideology is the CPC. And that uh, CPC didn't uh, stay much and wasn't, has not even formed government at the center. Mm -hmm. And we are lucky to have President Muhammad Buhari that comes in, who happens to be the founder of CPC because he came with his ideology and the ordinary person, ordinary man on the streets still believe that this is a man that is honest, very sincere about right from his heart that he loves this country and he wants to see to the detriment to what is happening to the detriment of the common man on the street. He wants to uplift the, the common man on the street. That APC as a political party is a party to bid. Why I'm telling you this, today if we go out and to sell our, 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 our ideologies, I will tell you that we have it better than the PDP. And part of what I'm coming in with is to re-engineer this party to make it a technologically based party. And one, two, to make this party a party that will take advantage of what we call the peer review mechanisms of political parties. Yeah. We will, this is a party that will interact with almost everyone. You see the town hall meetings that we do today in APC, it has never been done before. And these town meetings will take it to another level. Because there must be, when there is interaction between the governed and those that have been governed, then you will understand the mechanism of governance. And when you have a platform as a political structure that will give you leadership, that will produce the leaders of this country, you must have leadership that are very qualitative in the party. Mm -hmm. So that by the time we come to present, either in the manifesto, either in the guidelines, or what have you, of the party, party programs need to go in line with what the government of the day is also doing. Yes, Senator, so, I listened to you. You talked about uh, ideology, mm -hmm. a party having its own ideology and all of that. But you know, as we have it today, politicians are also being criticized for that lack of ideology. Today, somebody wakes up, moves from a certain political party to another political party without knowing of if um, those ideologies are, are actually in sync with what he believes in. What is your own position on that uh, cross carpeting moving from one political party to the other, despite um, the differences in ideology. Not until we institutionalize our political parties and make them body entities, we cannot get it right. And the kind of leadership that I intend to bring to, P to APC is that leadership that will make the organization look more like an entity, more like a body on its own, bigger than any individual in it. You are just members. We will be guided by the constitution of the party. We will be guided by the ethics and code of conduct that will be given as a guideline for every member of the party. Mm. And this is going to be a party that will be self-funded, not a party that will be dependent on anyone to bring money. We will generate that. We know we have the know-how to do it. And when, once we do it and institutionalize it, it will create the differences. And in so doing, you will see that when you belong to the party, by the time you are elected under the platform of that party, it will be very, very difficult for you to surrender. 
and we will get to a point that when there are issues, when, uh, when either a, 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 a someone is being recalled or someone is being removed or, or someone uh, happens to be late, you will see we get to that point that we will even be calling for the review of the Constitution to allow that political institution to conclude its term. Senator, if you succeed in your bid to be the national chairman of the APC, you will lead um, the party into the 2023 general election. How will you sell a party that some people will say uh, already has a, or whose image has been battered or whose image has uh, suffered? How would you sell that party to the electorate? No, no, you cannot expect every Nigerian to be very happy with, uh, with everyone. I mean, when you, are, when you are talking about going to 2023, we, we have our, our, our scorecard that we will display and let everyone come to see it. It's not something that is hidden. Will you tell me that the Southeast will not embrace APC with what this administration is doing for it? Look at the Port Harcourt to Inugu Expressway. Look at the, uh, the uh, East West Route. Look at the Coastal Railway. Look at the railway that is taken up from, from, from uh, Port Harcourt to, to, to Maiduguri. Have we ever had it that way? So, you see, there are, there are a lot of things that we will put on our, uh, as our scorecards. It's left for Nigerians to decide and look at it, which one is better for them. Yeah. It's not like uh, after you have uh, bastardized everything and you said you are a saint today, you will do it better. You will do it better how? When you, I mean, when you, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to use certain words, but I, I, I want to tell you that Nigerians and the political development in this country, Nigerians are wiser than what you think. But in all of this, with an APC government at the saddle for seven years, insecurity is at a frightening height and widespread across the country. All attempts at talking about it is often seen as an attack on the government of the day. People who should know and even speak up are scared not to be tagged anti-Buhari. The political appointees would rather prefer you talk about the infrastructure projects going on across the country, the rail lines and road construction, but they will come after you if you say lives and property are not safe. Some parts of the country have become killing fields, and it seems security agencies are helpless, but also hopeful that a miracle will stop the killings plundering and devastation. The Nation newspaper in its annual recognition of Person of the Year award declared that nobody is the winner. The newspaper said, and I quote, in 2021, when a group could not define a word, keep a building from falling, or highways from a bandit, or a currency from a nosedive, or even plead guilty to a book of revelations, our Person of the Year is nobody. What a year. You can watch the program again on TVC News YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. I am Femi Akonde. Thank you for watching.